Okay, event is starting, uh, and the thing is called one more time. All right. Maybe this is working. <laughs> ah. Okay, let's see. So, I need to rebuild my little event here. So, give me a, a few more moments here. So, I had a feeling, see, nothing ever makes sense, ever, so, on, on these things. Okay, so check this out. We were streaming for three hours on my previous uh, live stream file, okay? Three hours. And finally, it just decided to die. Because uh, Wirecast, so I'm on a broadcasting software called Wirecast. And what happens is sometimes like when you update to like from Wirecast like nine to 10 or whatever, eventually what happens is the file no longer cooperates because you, you were you made an old file in like Wirecast eight and now you're on Wirecast nine or ten, okay? And so that's always a worry. So I try to rebuild these files um, just to keep up with like the latest software thing. But we were good for hours, and then suddenly at like the three hour and something minute point, it decides to die. So what I have to do now is uh, so we have like the coral behind me. I'll make my face a little bit smaller here. So yeah, I have to, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to do all the design work on the fly, sorry guys. Move myself over a little bit, push that line. Sorry about that, guy. Whoa. Okay, so audio is probably going to be coming back. And, and I don't know why it's so loud. You went mute. I, I moved something in the thing. Sorry. All right, so this text now, I got to do something with. Okay. It's back. Yeah, I um, have to move some stuff around, and so I had to move my audio up. Good times were had by all. So let me go find where all this text stuff is for the overlay. Remember when we were talking about um, Remember when we were talking about why like nobody else does these live shows? Because there are some technological hurdles. <laughs> Stuff like this tends to happen. Okay, so I need to fix the height and the width. So let's the height to like 30. Nope, that ain't it. 50? 70? So that's not an ultra seduction. So we were at, we were at 170 something, I believe. 182. Okay. Hold on. Uh. Okay. 
getting the Okay. Sound? Jeez, the sound, man. What is the deal with the sound? It's so loud. Um, sound is a little loud, so I have to care, be careful of that. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Let me see what I can do about the sound here. Okay, is is this too low? I'm gonna turn it up just a. Uh, sound is kind of okay. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna li I'm gonna leave the uh, I'm gonna leave the sound just fine there. Okay, because I turned it down to 75. It sounds at 75, and I'm gonna do one last thing, and hopefully it does not break my stuff. But I'm going to add a DS and a noise reduction filter. So hopefully that still works, guys. Okay, all right? So it should remove the S's from my voice and it should like tone down all this other background noise, okay? So there's extra water sound, yeah, because it's my, I had some filters on the other thing. It sounds fine, it's only the left channel though. No, 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 it should be in both now. Okay, so I'm seeing it in both, both channels. Because I, originally I, I saw the same thing as you did. I saw it on, it should be both. Okay. Dang, Ben's working overtime. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm paying time and a half or something, whatever it is that people do for overtime. All right. <laughs> yes, okay, so let, let, let's go, let's go. Let's go to 184. Thank you guys for, for sticking with it. That's, that was hilarious. Thanks, random software bugs. All right. And usually I do something different with the font. That ain't happening, guys. <laughs> we got to do what we got to do. <laughs> so thank you all so much for, 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 for sticking with it. This, this, again, this is the beauty of doing a live show. Like sometimes... The, the stars align and blow your your broadcasting software to heck. On your salaries equals slave labor. Yeah, I know Ben gets paid well. He, I don't well, but Ben's doing okay. Ben just bought a new car, so congrats to Ben for that. He traded in his Acura and got a Civic. A new Civic. His Acura was like not happy. <laughs> he got a he got a Civic SI. We can do the speed run through this, Ben. All right. Font is fine. <laughs> yeah, I would. Uh, this is not my font of choice, but you know what? We're, we're doing it live. We're, we're doing it live. As, le as long as it's not like dingbats or something that's completely illegible. Comic Sans. Comic Sans. Now, what, what, what is this anyways? I think it's, uh, it's impact. Uh, man, live shows. These live shows. I, I, it's it's crazy how you how you have to be like a broadcast guru to like navigate all the weird things that could possibly happen with this, but we're here. How do you light corals from looking down at them for a photo shoot? Like so, if you're looking top down at a tank, I don't know. I kind of need to figure that out just a little bit because that's. Yeah, well, because yeah, you get a reflection from the water, it can be tough.
So yeah, this is the first time that we've ever done like a two-part show. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. We used to do like Saturday and Sunday. So like we would break up this list. Um, but this is the first time that there's going to be like two live show things for the same actual live show on the same day. And I don't think I'm going to be making it to dinner, Mom. <laughs> Just send the moms a text. There's like a family uh, get-together thing. It ain't happening. Wait, 189? 190. Can't make it to dinner, Mom. Live show had technical difficulties. Salty Reef and DIY. Do you ship to Italy? Unfortunately, we don't. All U.S. only. What's the setup for the corals on the screen right now? They are, yes, they are tilted 40, basically 45 degrees, more or less. And it, it is just for the show, because like once the show is over, then they get placed upright. I'm like trying to like, so my screen looks completely different than I'm used to. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously once we had to restart the stream, I had to rebuild this entire file. I'm, and I'm like looking around like, why are all the sizes of stuff different? I don't quite understand. Like Fade, what happened? I don't even know. Well, okay, here's what I think happened. So my broadcasting software wirecast it goes through updates fairly re regularly so it gets like big numbered updates so you go from like wirecast 7 to 8 to 9 or whatever and what tends to happen is that if you've created um like a broadcast file you know that does like all these different overlays it does like you know the camera on me the other camera the overlay green screening my back all this stuff okay so you create a file so if you create it in seven, it'll probably still work with eight. It might work with nine, but as, as the, the further you go along, the more likely it is that it's going to one day just fail. So occasionally I rebuild this file just in case, but today um, it's a, there, there's a software update available. So I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna go from nine, some, I'm gonna go from Wirecast nine to Wirecast 10. And, and before the show, I'm gonna see if it works, right? I'm not just gonna be like, oh, let's just do it. Um, so no, we're gonna we're gonna test it out. That's why, like, I started this not this live stream, but the, you know, the, the earlier one today. I started it about like 45 minutes early, just in case some goofiness was gonna happen, and nothing happened. So we were good. We were we went on for over three hours, three hours, and then suddenly, the file fails. And now I can't broadcast with it. It just it's just irreparably broken. I think it there's like I'm having issues with YouTube, I'm having issues with my other thing. It's like, but it's it's not playing well together. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna restart my computer. I'm gonna start with a blank broadcast document and just rebuild it from scratch and see if I can broadcast with it. And that did the trick. So I don't know why it worked for as long as it did. I don't know why it failed in the first place. I don't know, but we're back. We're back. So what's gonna happen is you'll be able to see both streams once like they both get published, I think. I don't think any I don't think the old one got deleted or anything like that, so 
Yeah. Okay, so reefer life. How do you maintain focus when they're tilted? The MPC 65 macro, okay. MPC 65 macro is the hardest lens you could possibly use. So no, you use the 100 millimeter 2.8. Don't use a 65 millimeter macro. That is an insane lens to try to do a live show with. Insane, bippity bonkers, don't do that. 100 millimeter macro is what you're gonna be living on. Can you do a video on how to improve nutrient export? 92 corner, 28 sump. A video on improving, I could probably do that. I mean, long story short, you're talking about better equipment, more frequent water changes, long story short. Okay, how do you buy from the live stream? I cannot show you the overlay. So go to titlegardens.com slash live. So I'm gonna try to, Yes. Slash live. Put that into your browser and you will see a, a little link on there like, how does this work? So check that out. And uh, long story short, you can see the numbered list. So if you like this particular stylo, it's number 199, you just toss that into your shopping cart and check out like normal. So there's a flat rate shipping, it's $39.99, but it's free after $250. Um, and in order to actually get an item, you have to complete the checkout process. So you might have to check out numerous times if you wanted multiple corals. And uh, in order to avoid getting charged multiple instances of shipping, you just select live sale slash add to an, add to an existing order. And just make sure you paid for shipping once. Where'd you get that shirt? I honestly don't remember. This is back when I wore more designer stuff. This is a, a Ted Baker, which is like a, I think he's like a British designer. I forget where I got the shirt. Yeah, I seriously got this like seven or eight years ago. And yes, thank you so much, Lisa. The, Lisa's the greatest. This is why Lisa is the best moderator. Like, she has your back, putting in links and everything like that. But yeah, anytime anybody starts a live stream, it's always an adventure. Did I miss the mushrooms? I think we had mushrooms just like a second ago. I would look at like the 190s maybe. There's not a ton, but there's a couple more later on. Yeah, 184 to 188. There's a couple elsewhere that you might want to check out. So here's the other benefit, okay? Because I've been, I've been saying that we've done these live shows for like a really long time. And I have seen it all when it comes to, to potential issues disrupting a live show. So this is, is like in, in, in past like iterations, past years, I might have got just totally freaked out. But even like Ben doesn't get high strung about this anymore. It's like, we're going to figure it out. Something dumb happened, we're going to figure it out. All righty. Is there such a thing as too many water changes? Um, not really. I mean, there's people that, that have continuous water change systems, so I don't think that there is such a thing. There might be such a thing if it starts to affect your pocketbook, though. Because it could get expensive if you just keep on you know, doing more and more and more water changes. But given the cost of doing a water change, there's not, it's probably the least expensive and most impactful thing you can do. 205.
Marcus Alexander is asking, is it possible to be successful without ever changing the water? Yes. Um, Real quick, I'll answer the next question. Do you deliver to Puerto Rico? Yes, we do. Uh, you have to add on a $25 Puerto Rico shipping module uh, because it's simply just more expensive to, to ship down there. Uh, so if you look in the miscellaneous category, you can see uh, a shipping module for, I think it's called like outside shipping. It's for like Alaska and it's for Puerto Rico. So you'll have to purchase that as well. So about the water change stuff. So Rico. Big aquarium, highly successful, SPS dominated. This is the mint chocolate chip, right, 207? Okay. Um, he's very successful with doing no water change, but you have to understand that not everybody is gonna have his system. He has over a thousand gallons. He exports heavily with calcium, re or, I'm sorry, with protein skimmers, with refugiums. He, um, and he, provides a lot more of that nutrient back to, to promote growth. So a lot of times I, I worry that people see an aquarium like Rico's, sees a flourishing no water change tank and thinks, I wanna do that for my tank. And their tank is something like a 15 gallon nano. No. The, the, the chemistry, the dynamics, the biology of your 15 gallon system is gonna be completely different. Like it shares practically nothing in common with a 1,000 gallon system jammed with live rock in both the sump and the display tank. Just not, just not comparable at all. So it is entirely possible to be successful, but it's not possible in every aquarium. Alfonso, have I tried that product from Red Sea? I have not tried it. Our, uh, our methodology here is like ultra basic. It's water change, it is protein skimmer, it is calcium reactor, and clean off the glass, essentially. Not a whole lot going on. Yeah, so Rico right now doesn't even have an aquarium. He, uh, he took down his, th well, that's not true. That's not true. He took down his show tank, and he's putting in a, another big show tank. I was like, wait a minute, he has a lot of aquariums still. They're all just frag tanks, though. And thanks again, Lisa, for, uh, for holding stuff down. So yes, please go to titlegardens.com slash live sale, and you'll see, uh, you'll see some instructions there, as well as all of these item numbers that you can purchase. So if you wanted an item number 213, assuming somebody else hasn't bought it already, just go and toss that into your, ca into your cart, and you can check out. Just watched the Rico move vid during the break. Didn't see much of Than helping. Boy, do I have a story. I was not there to be a lifter, but I did help with lifting poorly. But at some point, that thing got stuck. And it was only me and Rico in the room that it got stuck in to the point where anybody could do anything. It was just me and Rico. Rico blows out his back. Like completely, like he really should be in the hospital. He probably should have surgery on his back. He's, he's had back trouble for a very long time. And then I had to basically yank out this, this crowbar from under the tank. And if this tank like slides forward onto me, I die. So trust me when I say I helped. The only reason he has a tank in his basement is because of me. I'm taking full-on credit for that. I risked my life for that. 
I'll, 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 I'll elaborate more in my next video about that whole, that whole situation. It was not safe. No one should ever do what I did. Not cool. Josh, is there any way to influence a Monty cap to grow in a swirl? I think it's species dependent, to be perfectly honest. Are zoas sensitive to Aptasia X? I think everything is. I think Aptasia X is kind of like, it's like solid bleach or something like that. It kills a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, you, if, whatever you're pouring that on, you don't want it to, to get on anything else, like nothing else. So yeah, like, okay, long, uh, I keep on saying long story short, but this, uh, this tank, we're lowering it down the steps, okay? Because this tank has to go into a basement. And this giant tank, it probably weighs 1,500 pounds, plus it's on like this wooden sled, okay? And it's going down because it's attached to like a winch, which is attached to a Jeep. And once it got stuck, it got stuck on like the second to the last step. And we were trying to pull it back up, but the Jeep and the winch can't pull a 1,500 pound tank back up the stairs. So that's the only way out of this basement. It's like this tank is taking up literally every inch of the entire opening of this stairwell coming down. And it's stuck. It, it can't go down any further. It's stuck on that step. So Rico and I are like looking around his basement. We're like, it's like, it's like Apollo 13. You have to like find whatever you could find to, to like get in there and like, you know, try to pry up this sled off of the step. Now, granted, it's this thing is at a 45 degree angle. All of the weight is down on that edge, right? So we found one small crowbar that could possibly do the job. And so he gets in there, Rico, and he, you know, he's like live, reliving his glory days of being a power lifter, but he has a bad back now. And he lifts up on this thing and jacks his back up completely. Like he is gonzo out of the equation. Like he's done. He's not lifting like, he's not lifting his arms, <laughs> okay? And so now it's me, the camera guy, that has to like look at this thing and and what had happened is he Rico did successfully get it off of that step but then the whole thing slides down and is now wedged there against this crowbar and now I have to get in there and I have to like violently yank this crowbar out of its you know out of that wedge position and I'm like just thinking if this if I get this um, crowbar out and this tank just collapses on top of me it's over with but luckily the winch didn't give out luckily there wasn't a ton of slack on that that winch because the communication back and forth not that good from from the up top people to the to the basement people and uh, yeah everybody survived Rico broke his back or something but man, that was no fun. So that's the story. That's the story. Yeah, the, the pucker factor was high for me just watching the video. I can't imagine how it was for you, for you guys. Yeah, it was uh, not that fun. And I mean, and there's no way to like, oh, I'm just going to do this from this distance. Because no, it's basically at the last step. It's way, you know, down. So it was super, super dangerous, super scary. Do not recommend. Do not recommend. Like ever. <laughs> yeah, Tom. No worries, Tom. My, my, ne my next video, I'm going to retell the whole thing with video. Except I don't actually have video of that thing happening. The proof is in the pudding, though. The proof is that there's a tank at all in place. Josh, do you still have a display tank at home? No. I have not had a display tank in over 20 years. Have you fallen out of love with it? No, because I'm actually 
I have on order for the new building, I've got two 700-gallon show tanks coming. So for the first time in 20 years, I will have show tanks again. So let's see if I still got it. The last time I had a show tank, I was a broke college kid. So now I am a broke adult kid. <laughs> so we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can do this. We will try. And no, I haven't fallen out of love with it, but um, I've had a long time off from doing it. Uh, this is like Ben's favorite coral. It just looks dumb. <laughs> yeah, you know, I saw I saw an Isaurus with like weird colored polyps, like yellow and stuff. Yeah. Jonas, hi Than, glad you're okay after that Rico adventure. Yeah, it's like I wouldn't be, it's not an okay or not okay. It's like either I exist or I don't exist. So luckily I exist. A series on the show tanks? Yeah, you, you guys are probably going to be sick of all the videos I'll be making of those show tanks. I mean, it's two like really big 700 gallon tanks, right? People are going to be interested. What I'm especially going to be looking forward to is that every all like the uh, like the backseat drivers talking about how I did it stupidly and they could have done it better. <laughs> it's like all, all the all the anonymous people in the peanut gallery. I remember one guy um, years and years and years ago, he had a 4,000 gallon aquarium in his basement and people were like nitpicking his whole setup and his design and everything like that. And he was just like, guys, if you want to do it better than me, go ahead and do it better than me. But last time I checked, I'm the only guy doing this. And it's true. However, I think that he had eventually had to take it down anyway. So how do you move a tank that size? Uh, I'm thinking with a lot of machinery, like there's a lot of manpower that moved uh, Rico's tanks. It is unsafe, but for, for my tank, it doesn't have to go upstairs or downstairs or anything like that. It is a very, very flat in and out, but they're big and they're heavy. Cause like, so my 700 gallon, it's going to be 10 and a half feet by four feet wide by two feet tall. So that's what, thousands of pounds probably. Please help. My rose bubble tip has a ton of white mucus and tentacles are not sticky. Not a good sign. Um, hard to say what's even wrong with it. And are there any like bubble tip experts out there in the chat? Because usually when a when a when a an anemone starts to behave like that, it goes south in a hurry. Like sometimes it's like a bacterial infection. It's it's really hard to say what the deal is there. But yeah, not sticky, not a good thing. So, yeah, suction cups and stuff like that, I don't want anything to do with that for this move. Like, no, I want heavy machinery, I want motorized this and that. Are you going to Magna? So, um, is it Jorge? I am not. Um, I, was, I was on the fence, but I ended up going to Aquashella and then what ate into my travel budget was actually a, an international trip that I have planned later this year. So unfortunately, um, no, I'll be missing Macna this year. So yeah, like 
non-sticky anemones, sometimes you can kind of coax them back to health. Oftentimes they were just bothered by something, you know, whether it be like the tank conditions, maybe it's like some other thing in the tank that was bothering it. But yeah, I mean, usually when they start to go downhill, it's very hard to, to right the ship. I mean, you might want to try a water change, you might want to try running carbon, you might want to try feeding it, but yeah, no guarantees. Can you recommend any corals for the Fluval 13.5? I'm not the nano guy. Um, I mean, I'm not really sure even even dealing with that type of scale because I, I I would probably recommend something that would grow entirely too large. I'd probably stay away from a lot of SPS. They might be a little sensitive. Um, but maybe like s smaller leathers, mushrooms maybe. That's something that I would probably play with. Maybe a hammer. Volatins 2007. Just watch Rico's video. Interesting to hear the backstory. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll share whatever it is I shot. Um, it's going to look pretty similar. I'm probably in several of his shots. Uh, we got it downstairs. We got it on the stand. He's actually going to have to get more guys to come and help him put it into position. Uh, and hopefully Rico heals quickly, yes. I have a feeling he needs back surgery. But we'll see. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but his back is not good. And he should not be trying to, to lift tanks. I'm I'm not I'm not a I'm not the right kind of doctor to be making that determination. <laughs> I'm the kind of doctor that I don't know, writes legal briefs if that if that's what they do. I bought a bright orange Leptoceras and a golden eye chalice from Aquapalooza, New York. Reefapalooza? That aren't doing as well as my other corals I bought that day. Any idea what's going on? Whenever Leptoceras is concerned, sometimes I wonder if it's uh, an issue with like phosphate remover and stuff like that. Do you have a holy grail torch? I do not. What should I be looking for for a KH number? I would look for something around 8. But more importantly, I would try to keep something stable. What do I think of Rico's new tank? It's nice. It's big. It's glass, which I like. And big and glass usually doesn't mix. Usually when you get to really big tanks, you're starting to talk more acrylic than glass. But we're kind of addicted to glass. Lawson about Rico's tank video. Yeah, I'll, I'll be getting one. I mean, I've voiced it over. It's it's basically just needs to get edited. But you know, live show, live show popped up. Hopefully, I get it done either Monday or Tuesday. Probably Tuesday. Yeah, actually, like nobody should really be lifting that type of tank. I mean, it should be more like machinery and stuff. But we kind of had to work with what we had. And going downstairs, ugh, that complicates things tremendously. Any 
And I'll tell you what, that tank is never leaving that basement, not, not in one piece anyway. What is the best salt you use to make salt water? I don't think there is a best salt. I use omega, but I use omega entirely for non-chemistry related reasons. Not to say that the chemistry is not good. Clearly it's good enough for, for these corals. Um, I do it purely on shipping convenience and I like the pricing. And they're an Ohio company, it's local, blah, 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 blah. None of it has to do with chemistry. I, I, when it comes to chemistry, the salts are more similar than they are different. They'd better be. They're all aiming for the same target. They should all be pretty close, right? So there's, there's other things that kind of influence your purchase decision. Um, and for in, in, in my case, I have to order pallet loads of this stuff, but I can't accept the full size semi up my driveway. So what I have to do is I need to get a short truck with a lift gate, blah, blah, blah. And what tends to happen is a lot of the bigger salt distributors can't do that. So they just get crossed right off my list. Like Instant Ocean. We used Instant Ocean slash Reef Crystals for a long time. But the, the shipping issues were just too much of a hassle. So I, I changed salt purely based on shipping. Stuff like that. So um, Omega's fine. People like other brands. They're fine too. But whatever you, you, you use, try to stick with it because changing salts is where people sometimes get messed up. Do I need anemones to breed clowns? I have no idea. I've never successfully bred clownfish. What's the most expensive frag you guys ever had? Probably a bounce mushroom. And we've killed three of that type of bounce mushroom. We're, we're like, we're, we're okay with like a lot of bounce mushrooms. The most expensive bounce mushroom we've killed three times. We're almost to the end, guys. Hell or high water. Technical difficulties and all. Going extra overtime. Like, we started this a oh, good, what, 45 minutes early. We're staying a good 30 minutes late. You guys got, like, practically an extra hour of live, st live show today. I don't know how Rico does the 12-hour stuff. This is, like, what, four hours for me? My throat is toast. And I am super ready for dinner. Four hour live streams for professionals. Thanks, Lawson. Appreciate that. <laughs> All righty, last coral, guys. Last one. My LFS sells an orange bounce mushroom for 60 bucks. If you like it, you should pick it up. You know, I need to make a video, I'm, I'm gonna make a video about corals you should not buy. Like corals you should avoid. And one of them is corals that other people think are cool but you don't. So there, that's a sneak preview to that. Okay guys, we're out of here. Thank you so much for sticking with us through, through all the little difficulties here. Hope you had a good time. Remember, now there's gonna be two live shows to see for this particular event. So thanks everybody. Thanks to all the moderators. Thanks to the Patreon crowd. Thanks to Ben for staying a half hour. And we're, we even have to break down. He's gonna be here for another half hour. So thanks to him for staying late. Anyways, guys, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>